Hey everyone, Lewis here with Lab Padre. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Starbase Weekly Updates. We're running a bit late this week, so let's dive in. Leading off this week, we saw an interesting steel structure being delivered to the launch site. It appears this might be for a quick disconnect for the ship cryostation. At the shipyard, we continue to see SpaceX make progress on Booster 8, with a new barrel section being added to the liquid oxygen tank. Early in the morning on the 18th, workers are seen removing one of the alignment pins from the B-7 transport stand. This stand, designed to support and secure the booster while stationary or in transit, was then moved next to Booster 7. Later that morning, with SpaceX's LR-11000 connected, Booster 7 was lifted off the can crusher where it had undergone both cryo and thrust simulation testing and placed on the transport stand in preparation for the move back to the build site. That same afternoon, with the booster now secured to the transport stand, B-7 started its almost two-mile journey to the production facility. As it passed by a Rover 2 cam, we were treated to a close-up of all the plumbing under its skirt. As Booster 7 arrived at the high bay, b 8 still in complete lock section was rolled outside to make room. Monday also saw the installation of the first steel columns of SpaceX's permanent production facility, also known as the Star Factory. Meanwhile, at Port Canaveral, SpaceX's recovery ship, Doug, towed a shortfall of Gravitas out to sea ahead of the launch of Crew-4. On the 19th, crews at the Orbital Launch Integration Tower were hard at work raising up and installing new sections of pipe. The LR-11000 made quick work of it, lifting assemblies like this one, potential basket strainer and butterfly valve with a redundant bypass. Back at ground level, a new delivery brought additional construction materials for one of the new buildings at the launch site. Riding a low boy trailer early on the morning of the 20th, a Starship Puck Shucker, which simulates sea level engine loads during cryo test, was seen being trucked in. The shucker was followed by a booster thrust puck which carries the massive engine loads of the booster's inner 13 engines. After a brief stop, the thrust puck headed back to the build site. Throughout the week, crews made quick progress at the Star Factory. Additional columns were installed as well as several roof beams as we start to get an idea of just what the first section of the building will eventually look like. On Thursday, we saw three thrust simulators for the vacuum-optimized Raptors delivered to the launch site, getting SpaceX one step closer to S-24's upcoming test campaign. And there you have it, after a relatively short and steady week here at Starbase. Thanks again for watching Lab Padre's Starbase Weekly Updates. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. We'll see you next week. Lab Padre, out.